Good morning and welcome to another Friday reading vlog from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books. She's washed her hair and it's 27 degrees so there will be no hair dryer on this hair today. Um, I might tuck it back actually because I think it's going to get a bit hot but here we are on another Friday reading vlog up dressed already because we're going away for a few days. We're going away to Whitstable for a few days and um, I'm going to talk you through the books that I'm taking with me and I'm going to talk you through a few other things that's going to be going on um and yeah come along with us um i'm taking four books with me a bit optimistic <laughs> but two of them i have started so i wanted to finish the two that i'd started and then i had earmarked two for this break in particular um there's gonna be a couple of sun loungers in the garden so i'm gonna be sitting there and reading and having a lovely time so the two that i've got to finish are in memoriam by alice Wynne which I know is going to be a great joy to a few people because so many people have told me that I will enjoy this book. I am just over halfway through it. I am enjoying it. What I wasn't expecting, I knew it was a queer love story, but what I wasn't expecting is the sort of really heavy, descriptive um, scenes of war in the trenches and what that's like to see all of your friends and colleagues just being killed one by one in really horrific ways. Um, so yeah, trigger warnings for that because I had no idea going into this book that that's what it was going to be like. But I am enjoying it very much um, and something quite big has just come to my realisation. Oh, what are they doing? Some testing or something. There's some buzzing going on and David said, that's the, that's the guy outside. So that's the first one I'm going to be taking and I mean, realistically, I might well finish that today. So there we go. Then I've also got out from the library, look at this cheese of face on it. Uh, Gareth Malone's Guide to Classical Music. This was previously published under Music for the People. Um, I'm only 32 pages into this, but I'm enjoying it very much. Also, a lot of these things, so there's a big appendix at the back, but I've really been trying to get a bit more into classical music. You'll know that from at the end of these Friday reading, or throughout the Friday reading vlogs at some point, I read a, a piece of classical music. Um, but I saw this in my library and I was like, that looks great. So I've had a little read. I mean, the first section was about um, classical music that might already be familiar to you. And I played a lot of them. They give, he gives you a list. Um, and I played a lot of them and I was familiar and David liked a lot of them too. So, and now we're on talking through what's in an orchestra. Um, and yeah, it's really accessible and I think I'm gonna learn a lot. So we'll be reading this as well. And then the two books that I marked specifically for the weekend were the Examiner by Janice Hallett, which is the new Janice Hallett. It's not due out. Well, it's due out in August, so it might well be out now. Um, Janice Hallett, I loved the appeal, like loved it, really, really loved it. And then didn't really get on very well with the Twyford Code, didn't even finish the mysterious case of the Orpeton Angels and also quite enjoyed the Christmas appeal. But I think the joy of the appeal was that I'd never read anything like that before. So we will see how we get on with the Examiner. But... I have been, I feel like I've got some time and if it's time that I need to dedicate, because when I read The Appeal, I read it literally over two days and David read it over a weekend too. So if it's time I need to dedicate, then time I have. <laughs> so there we go. And then the other one I've brought along is My Favourite Mistake by Marion Keys. Um, pretty mainstream, <laughs> these books, aren't they? Um, but yeah, I've been meaning to read this for a really long time. So those are the books. And then also I'll be bringing with me A Year of Wonder, because like I said, I'll be listening to a piece of classical music and we'll be finishing the vlog with a poem for every summer day. Um, we will do the lit chat question. So if you are new around here, we uh, read a question at the beginning of the video and then we answer it at the end and i answer it here and you guys answer in the there we go and you guys um answer in the comments so this is paul breakfast at tiffany's and it says what is your least favorite movie or television series based on a book what didn't you like about it got one already what is your least favorite movie or television series based on a book what didn't you like about it so that will be the question that we will be answering at the end and yeah oh, i'm also going to be making <clears throat> let me go and get that and i can show you what i'm going to be making and also from the sweet roasting tin i'm going to be making banoffee chocolate tarts which i think look delicious david doesn't like bananas so i'm going to make some with bananas and some with apple because they're um toffee as well so hopefully that'll be like a toffee apple hopefully so yeah, I'm gonna make banoffee chocolate tarts for me and chocolate 
toffee apple tarts for David. Um, and then lastly, we're going to take the Isle of Cats, which is a, book, a board game I got for Christmas. We played this before in the board game cafe, and I remember it being quite a tense day actually because it was really, really busy in there, and it was only me and David. And I, was, I said I wanted to play this, and we had to sort of like teach ourselves to play it over a um, YouTube video while there was loads of people in the background talking and having a good time in the board game cafe. So I've had this for a while. I've want, been wanting to play it again, but I've completely forgotten. So. And then we're just taking our lovely little pack of cards that I bought in Waterstones before we went on our honeymoon. Look out, look at them, they're gold. They're gold, guys. And then I was so pleased with them, and then when I took them on holiday, I was like, oh, these are amazing. I've never seen anything like it. And then they sold them in the shop on the ship. So long. Right, okay, so I need to go and finish packing. I'll see ya in Whitstable. <sighs> we're here. We've borrowed these uh, some loungers from David's mum and dad and we've popped them in the garden. And now I'm just having a little read. David, so we went to, on the way, we went to the farm shop, which was lovely. It's called Macnades. If you're ever in Faversham or Canterbury or Whitstable, you need to go to Macnades. It is such a good farm shop. And we went in there and got some veg for salad and we got a bit of quiche each. Mine was cheese and chutney, which was, and David had a quiche Lorraine. Um, and some dips and there's a wasp um some dips go away wasp some dips and some crudite including radishes i love radishes so much and had that and sat outside and ate it which was really nice and then when we got back there was a few things that we didn't get because we were worried about them melting so david went and got some ice lollies and some ice um and a few bits i really wanted some nuts but all he could get was like dry <laughs> roasted peanuts, which are nice, but I wanted like, you know those nuts they do in Marks and Spencers? They are expensive, they're like eight pound for a tub. And then it's, you get like hazelnuts in there, Brazil macadamias in there. There's, there's a little bit too much almonds going on in there for me. Um, but yeah, it's really, really nice. That's the sort of thing I was hoping for, but never mind. Anyway, he's back now. He's, he's very into the Olympics, so we've just, um, it's been quite a good day for the Olympics. There's been quite a few gold medals for Great Britain that they weren't expecting. Um, so he's probably gonna sit in there and I'm gonna sit here and read for a little bit more. We're gonna have fish and chips on the beach tonight um, for dinner and then come back and probably do a little bit more reading, but I'll probably take you to the beach with us. Um, and you can see how lovely it is. I'm in the shade. I'm happy. I'm about to have a Diet Coke, a caffeine-free Diet Coke with ice and a slice of lemon. So yeah, things really couldn't be any better. <laughs> well, Daphne could be here, but she wouldn't really get on with uh, Betty the dog who also lives here. So yeah. <sighs> That was nice, wasn't oh, it? Oh, we are doing a video. I thought we were doing a little picky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're having a lovely sit down. It's very cool and nice, yeah, isn't it? Lovely breeze. Lovely little sunset. Well, not quite a sunset. It's, it's way, <laughs> it's it's way it's above. <laughs> Practically midday. Chippies on the beach. Nice way to have a bit of dinner. Yeah. To wait ages, didn't, didn't we, then? We did. Luckily, we had to go and get some cash out. So, um... But whilst David was waiting, give me a bit of chip water. Chip off the old block. Um, I nearly finished my book, so I've got literally about eight pages left of this. So, would you mind if I just read it? No. What are you going to do? Uh, check on the Olympics. Check on Olympics. I feel like that might be yours, but where are we? You might be able to hear. Just in the distance, the sound of the carnival. David and I have just got back from the carnival, which is very good. I, I can't remember. The last time I went to a carnival, honestly, I think I must have been like a child watching the Christmas lights go on. But they got a carnival here today in Whitstable, so we went along to watch the beginning of that, which was lovely. And I will insert some footage of that here. Yeah. Yeah. Carnival! <laughs> I was 
looked very good and everyone was really into it which was lovely um so yeah we are now fast approaching the end of saturday i went for a singing workshop this morning so i'm part of a choir a, a branch of a group of choirs called uk soul choirs and they're sort of dotted all over kent and london um and today there was like a specialist extra workshop that you could book to go on to all about breathing and technique and um i've been waiting for this workshop to come up for ages so i was so pleased to go along today and learn about breathing and technique and um all sorts of things like that something that i struggle with is consistency oh, i can hear lots of motorbikes going by lots of motorbikes can you hear me um yeah consistency is something i struggle with so I can be like really, really good one day and then the next day I just can't get it at all. So I think a lot of the techniques we, we were taught today and I learned a lot about chest voice and about uh, head voice and about mixed voice. Um, yeah, it was just really, really valuable and I'm so, so pleased I went. So that was lovely. And then David and I walked back. Uh, so David walked me there with little Betty who uh, we're looking after and um, then come pick me up later which was really nice then we walked back and then we had some delicious sandwiches we got from a very good sourdough bakery here called uh, grain and half uh i had a mozzarella so we went and bought the bread you have to queue for it but it was absolutely worth the queue um and then came back and i had a mozzarella tomato and basil sandwich and david had a chicken and hummus and salad sandwich and then we got jacket potatoes for dinner and we're going to play isle of cats which i'm very excited about so david's about to nip out and uh walk the dog um, and then pop the jacket potatoes on and then we're just having a chill out evening but I'm very excited because tomorrow is Sunday and tomorrow there's lots and lots of good charity shops in both Whitstable and Tankerton um, so we're going to go to the charity shops around those places haven't got my eye on anything I'd quite like to get um, after a Patreon book club recently, we were talking and a lot of people were men uh, mentioning that the Robin Hobb books are really good long books to be to get involved in and to be in a series with. So I'm going to have a keep my eye out for um, Robin Hobb books in the charity shops, but also clothes and little trinkets. I need strappy because it's so hot at the moment. And previously, my wardrobe has never included strappy tops. I was wearing a strappy dress yesterday, but I just never, ever wear them. Um, so anything strappy, maybe I'll have a look at in the charity shops and... Yeah, I think David's always on the lookout for a few bits of clothes and things and maybe some vinyls, but we'll take you with you on that t tomorrow. I can't be bothered to go and get it, <laughs> but I've been reading The Examiner by Janice Alley. Oh, so the Gareth Malone choir, uh, not choir, but classical music books, very, very good. But what I've decided to do is stop reading it and I've actually just bought the audiobook on Audible and I'm going to listen to that um, because it sounds as though it's got some, um, like where it's talking about different notes and things like that and to get into the mindset of a choir and to understand it more, the audiobook actually plays that sort of thing. So I'm going to listen to it rather than read it. So I did start reading The Examiner by Janice Hallett today and I'm well into it. It's really massive, so it's going to take me a long time. Um, no, it might not take me a long time because I, I think I'm going to read a little bit when David takes um, Betty out and yeah... I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm enjoying it as much as I enjoyed The Appeal, which is good because the other Janice Hallett books I haven't really got on with very much. So yeah, I've read about just over 100 pages. So I th think I'm about a fifth of the way through. So that's Saturday. Hope you're having a lovely weekend and you're enjoy you enjoyed that little, little bit of uh, carnival stuff I've sent your way. And um, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow for charity shop shopping i'm very excited about it good morning hi what are we david we're on holiday we're on holiday we're intrepid charity shop buyers do you want to go down here or do you want to carry no, on along here down. you like this way he likes to walk along the seafront um and we're heading into whitstable today to scale the charity shops. They have lots of charity shops. They do, and they're quite good as well. Yes. What are you in the market for? Uh, maybe some items of clothing. Yeah. Um, that's probably. I always say vinyls, but charity shops. That's what I said yesterday. Are rubbish for vinyls. It's oh, always, are they? It's always like um, Donny Osmond, um, and just some really obscure old rubbish. That's always the same, and um, yeah, or something like what's. The, I was going to say the Osmonds, but I've already said Donny Osmond. <laughs> Donny Osmond, um, or the Osmonds, yeah. or what's the other Osmonds oh, called? Many Osmonds. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, I'm after some clothes, maybe some shopping shorts. So I've got this second-hand sleeper dress on today that I bought from online. In fact, from the same person that I second-hand bought my wedding dress from. Oh, exactly. From Charlotte, and I can't think of her surname. <laughs> but she's a... Uh, Tilsbury. No, <laughs> no, you're thinking of Charlotte Tilbury, but yeah. that's, that's makeup, David. He tries to have a go, doesn't he? <laughs> um, Charlotte, oh my God, what's her surname? I can't remember. She's got the podcast, The Fringe of It. And she used to run Betty magazine. Oh, God. Charlotte Betty. No, I can't think. But that's who this is from, and it's lovely. David said I look like I'm in a Jane Austen novel, and I enjoyed that very much. And then we're out for dinner tonight to a place called Samfire. We're, we've been before, but we've only ever been in the winter, haven't we? Because we've only ever been for my birthday or for Tom's birthday. Yeah. My birthday's in November and Tom's is in February, so it'll be nice. And they're quite seasonal, so it'll be nice to go there seasonally. Well, However, we let this chat pass. We thought it was seasonal. We, um, no worries. We, uh, we went, yeah, we, we looked at the menu yesterday or the day before? Yeah. Yesterday. Oh my God, was that yesterday? It feels yeah. like a week ago. Yeah. And they had two of the same things on the menu from when we went in November. Yeah. One was a fish pie that David had and really liked, so. But we're going there tonight, so I'm excited about that. So, let's go to the charity shops and let's show you our wares. Oh, I didn't tell you what I'm after. Clothes, Robin Hobb books. I've only got one and a half books left to read. So, Charlotte Tilbury makeup? No, they, they wouldn't be selling Charlotte. I don't think they can even sell makeup in charity shops. But yeah, we'll see you in there. It's been a lovely day, but lots and lots of walking, hasn't it, David? Very, lots of walking. So we've stopped for a Mo slice. More so for me. Well, David's done, no, he took the dog out this morning, so he's done loads of walking. Um, we, the first um, charity shop we went in, huge success. Didn't buy anything in any of them after that. We went in about seven. Anything. I haven't bought anything, I'm no. disappointed. So, but I'll show you those when we get home. But yeah, just gonna sit and eat this delicious slice of pizza. Yes. And watch the world go by. We're back, and I'm back in the garden, and I thought I would show you the items that I have got today. So, we went to the charity shops, we went to about seven, I mean, I think I've already said this to you, we went to about seven, but I only got stuff in the first shop. And I was so excited that I found three Robin Hobb books in the first shop, that I was like, I'm gonna find a Robin Hobb book in every single, I'm gonna have the whole series by the time this is done. But sadly, I got just three, which is still good, so, as I understand it, and please, if you know more, comment below. The Robin Hobb books are set into one, two, three, four, five, six sets of books. So it starts with the Farseer trilogy, and it all begins with The Assassin's Apprentice. Now I've got that on reservation at the library. They did have a copy in Harbour Books, and I was so close to buying it, but I was like, no, you've got it coming. I think it might even be waiting for me at the library, so I can go and get that on Tuesday. Then you've got the Live Ship Traders, of which I've now got the second book in that series, which is called The Mad Ship. So that's a tri trilogy too. Then you've got the Tawny Man trilogy, of which I have the third book in the series of that. Then you've got the Soldier's Son trilogy. Then we've got the Rain World Chronicles, which are four books, of which I have the first book of that Chronicles. And then you've got Fitz and the Fool, so, are these, do the, all of these books make up like one series. I'm still gonna go for The Assassin's Apprentice first, but then do they all feed into each other or are they all, for, for example, I've got the fourth, I've got the first in the, the, the Chronicles here, like could I just start that straight away? But yeah, so these are all a pound each, so I'm delighted about that because they were all a tenner otherwise. And yeah, I will continue to have a look. But yeah, I just started off so excited that I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get the whole bloody series today. So alas, did not. Um, and then the only other thing I bought, and that was in, it was in the, 
RSPCA shop, I think it was. I bought a strappy top. They had it in like a sort of nude colour as well, which I will probably live to regret. But yeah, it was originally from Zara. And it's just a little, I said I wanted some strappy tops, didn't I? And yeah, I just think it would look nice with a pair of jeans. And I think maybe in the winter I can wear it over, because it's quite flowy, it's quite cropped as well. I can wear it over some other like jumpers and things. So there we go. And then I mentioned that we also went to the Harbour Bookshop, Harbour Books in Whitstable. This is falling around like all over the place. And I picked up a 404 Inklings book, BFFs, The Radical Potential of Female Friendship. So this is a whole series of books. All right, matey. Are you show Betty? Are you be on the camera? Who's that? Are you on the camera? Okay, bye. Um, no, you mustn't. I'm showing the books. No, you mustn't come up here. David, can you call Betty? Betty. Betty. Betty loves David. Um, BFFs, the Radical Potential of Female Friendship. So the 404 Inklings series are um, a series of like long form essays. They've got like a lot of them, including one written by Booktube's own Jean. Um, and yeah, this is all about female friendship and it sort of draws upon uh, Toni Morrison and Eleanor Ferrante, Book Smart, the film, which I love, Grey's Anatomy, Insecure, The Virgin Suicides and beyond. So yes, so I recently got another one of these in Margate and I'm going to, and that was about female voice in British hip hop music. So I'm excited to read these. So if I get my other book, which is The Examiner, more on that in a minute, read, I might start reading that. And then there's two more I picked up. So this is The Britannias by Alice Albinia. Um, the Britannias and the Islands of Women. So this was long listed for the Women's Prize for Nonfiction. So it was the first uh, Women's Prize for Nonfiction they had. And I put a reservation on it at the library. I was very excited because this was like one of the main ones I was excited about. And then my library were just like, we've decided not to buy that book, so you can't have it. <laughs> so that was disappointing. So I bought a copy today. And yeah, I mean, I've been recently saying about how I've really enjoyed sort of travel books. I've just read Gears for Queers um, about a couple that go on a, um, a bike riding tour. So I really like sort of like, like travel books with a focus on maybe queer people or the journey and stuff like that. And this is about the Britannia, so the British Isles, with a focus on women in the British Isles. So yeah, when I had a little look at the contents, so it goes into details about each of the islands including islands in Scotland and islands down in um, England and all over the place and the Channel Islands. Um, yeah, I'm excited to, to read it, but yeah, this might be sort of dipped in and out of, but we shall see. Um, and then I also, on, on the same theme of enjoying the book, uh, Gears for Queers and uh, the travel book, I saw this and had never heard of this and thought it'd be really seaside. Uh, and this is Travelling While Black, Essays Inspired by Life on the Move by Nanjala Nyambola. And this is um, about her travels and what it's like being a black woman travelling. So the, the blurb says here, what does it feel to, uh, like to move through a world designed to limit and exclude you? What are the joys and pains of holidays for people of colour when guidebooks are never written with them in mind? How are black lives today impacted by the other in legacy of colonial cultures and policies? What can travel tell us about our sense of self or home, of belonging and identity? What has the world order become, why has the world order become hostile to human mobility um, as old as humanity itself when more people are on the move than ever? So yeah, so and this all chronicles her sort of travels. And it says here from Nepal to Botswana, Sicily to Haiti, New York to Nairobi. So yeah, I thought that'd be really cool. So six books bought today, three from charity shops, three from Harbour Books, and yeah, as I said, I'm still reading The Examiner. I'm this much through. I have very much enjoyed it. I feel like I was talking to David about this earlier when we were stopped for some gelato. He said, oh, is it, are you enjoying it as much as The Appeal? And I was like, well, no, like, this is, I think this is as good as The Appeal, but what appealed about The Appeal was that I hadn't read anything like that before. And this sort of like multimedia way of reading, WhatsApp messages, emails, minutes from parish council meetings, those sort of things, like that had never happened to me before. And I was like, wow, this is such a good medium and such a page turner. So this was always going to be not as sort of like, wow, as, um, as the appeal but yeah I feel like the characterization is done really well in here the sort of like there's a really annoying character that is really is going to stay with me a long time something that I haven't got to the bottom of yet is this scorpion with a little sting in the tail 
which is interesting because I'm like two thirds of the way through and I don't know what this means yet. This is the proof copy, so I don't know what the end version will look like, but yeah. So yeah, I would have liked to have finished this today, but we're off out for dinner. We're leaving for dinner in about an hour. So I need to go and get ready. I was gonna wash my hair, but I might not. Um, but yeah, that's how things are going. And I'll probably see ya tomorrow. No, not yet, not yet, you can't. We're home! Wow. We're home, we're very pleased to be home. And we've, oh, I thought you were bringing in Daphne to be like, here's the little baby! No little baby, but yeah, we're gonna unpack, we've already put a load of washing on. God, I can't believe how much washing four nights for two people could generate. I suppose I did wear two outfits one day when I went out for dinner. Anyway. I thought I would, whilst I was doing a bit of unpacking, I would listen to the piece of music for today, except I don't know what today's date is. Alexa, what's the date? It's Tuesday, the 6th of August. Tuesday. If you'd like, I can tell you the time and reminders no. of the day when you dismiss your no. morning alarm. No, no. Would you like to enable this routine? No! So the piece of music today is called Ride Through and it's by Eleanor Alberger, who was born in 1949 and at the time that this book was published, still alive. On Sorry, your... I'm not sure about that. Alexa, stop. On Jamaica Independence Day, music from one of the country's most magnificent musical daughters. Born in Kingston, Alberga was just five when she decided she wanted to be a pianist. Later, she came to the UK to study at the Royal Academy of Music, and her work as a composer has been heard everywhere from the soundtrack of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs to classical music's biggest knees up. The Last Night of the Proms, she's also a conductor. The mix of influences in Alberga's music makes it hard to pin down her style. There's music that directly reflects African and Caribbean traditions in its tonal and rhythmic palette. And there's stuff that's more reflective of 20th century European influences. I've got high hopes for this. I don't have a fixed style, she says. Every time I start a piece, I like to feel as if I've wiped everything clean with an approach of where on earth am I going to go from here? This piece came just after the Scottish cellist Robert Irvine read on UNICEF's website that a child dies as a result of violence every five minutes as a result of malnutrition every 15 seconds, and that 17,000 children under five die every day because they don't get the healthcare they need. Recognising that playing the cello will not end child suffering, Irvine ne nevertheless uh, wanted to do something more useful than just giving concerts. He convinced a group of contemporary composers, including Alberga, to donate to a work to an album, Songs and Lullabies, Every Penny Raised Goes to UNICEF's Work. Alberga based her contribution on traditional Jamaican nursery rhyme. Ride through, ride through the rocky road, any boy me, no love, me no chat to them. Alexa, play Ride Through by Eleanor Alberga. Ride Through by Eleanor Alberga from Spotify. Do you want to see them? <laughs> so happy. Well, I enjoyed that a lot. What about you, Duffy? I think Duffy's very happy to have us home. She's not normally this happy to see us, are you, Dap? Are you happy? I'm happy. Although, <laughs> I can't find the card of the question that we asked. I thought I'd put it inside one of the books I was taking away with me, but I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> Unless it's inside here. This is the one I haven't looked at. Oh, it is. Hurrah. Hurrah. Right, okay. Um, so we can answer this question now. What is your least favourite movie or television series based on a book? What didn't you like about it? Well, the glaring thing was, um, was the movie adaptation they made of The Golden Compass, which was the uh, first bash they had at adapting the His Dark Materials books. Um, I can't quite work out why it didn't work, because the casting was pretty good. I mean, Daniel Craig as Lord Asriel, tick. Nicole Kidman as Mrs Coulter, tick. Like, it all seemed, but it just did not come together. And I remember being really, really excited to see that film and it just didn't work. All right, Duffy. Um, where are you, Duffy? Can you see? Oh no, I'm just got in the toilet now. Um, so yeah, that just didn't work for me. However, the, the HBO series, I absolutely loved. I never finished it though, so I've just reminded myself that maybe I should go back and finish that at some point. Um, but yeah, my answer for this is, what is your least favorite movie or television series based on a book? What didn't you like about it? Very interested to hear your answer to that. What is your least favourite uh, What is your least favourite movie or television series based on a book? What didn't you like about it? And as we said, it's Tuesday the 6th of August. Hurtling towards autumn. 
And we've either got The Horses by Edwin Muir or The Smile by William Blake. Ooh, I might go for The Smile by William Blake. What do you think, Dappy? The Smile by William Blake. Do you think the smile by William Blake, you little cute girl? Mm. Cutie. Love you. You might not have seen her properly there because she might have been spoiled. But yeah, we're going to go for the smile by William Blake. One more, one last thing before I um, read uh, the poem just to finish up today is that I've just been to the library and picked up Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. So very excited about starting this this afternoon. Um, and if I get sort of 100 pages in and realise I'm really enjoying it, I'm going to put a reservation on the second one already. I had a look in the library while I was there to see if they had the second one, which is called Royal Assassin. And they did not. So... We shall see. Right, okay. The Smile by William Blake. How comforting do you find the idea of one true smile that can end all misery if it can only be smiled once in a lifetime? Deep. There is a smile of love, and there is a smile of deceit, and there is a smile of smiles in which these two smiles meet. And there is a frown of hate, and there is a frown of disdain, and there is a frown of frowns which you strive to forget in vain. For it sticks in the heart's deep core and it sticks in the deep backbone and no smile that was ever smiled but only one smile alone. That betwixt the cradle and grave it once smiled can be but when it is once smiled there's an end to all misery. Thank you very much for joining me on this little holiday vlog to Whitstable. I had a lovely time but I'm very happy to be back with the baby. Because I missed you. Did I miss you? She's just pouring at the floor and just being very cute. I miss you so much. See you all again soon. Bye!